Oh goodness. Okay. <laughs> this is this is a screenshot that Etho has sent me. Um, this this hasn't got any other like the YouTube compression. Well, it probably has now that it's on my YouTube video. But this is this is what he fully sent me. Uh, <laughs> The time code from his episode and of course if we zoom in boop, look at that who's that cheeky guy up there <laughs> i'm so happy <laughs> i'm so happy that i could be seen um in ethos video and i think you can see me in cubs video as well go check them out it's honestly it's like it's like playing where's wally where's waldo whatever you want to call it um, and I am the Wally, and <laughs> there I am. The fact that, like, it, it just makes it even better that technically I could have been spotted. Yeah, I'm, I'm framing this and putting this on my wall, I think. Hello, 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 and welcome back, everybody, to All oh, That Building Was Close, another episode here on the Hermitcraft server with me, ZF. Hope you are very well. We are returning back from our very successful spy mission that we did last episode. If you missed it, you gotta check it out. It was an absolute belter. But we are heading back over to our Hole of Fame where, you know, whole sweet hole. What can I say? Look at this place. I love it. I love it. And we are filling it with our Z advancements as ever, uh, because today, hoja. Hwaja! We have a brand new Z advancement to attempt, at least. I mean, who knows? Maybe we won't accomplish it. Maybe I'm just that bad. Quick thing to note, though. Last episode, we added a few more dangling animals, and everyone was incredibly worried about my poor little dangling strider here. Firstly, for it being cold, which, you know what? I think it just needs to grow up. Look, it's got plenty of hair on it. It's got plenty of warmth for its own thing. Um, <laughs> so it's going to stay a little bit chillier. It's not in the nether anymore. It's fine. Um, but people were worried about the rain. But don't worry. I've got this amazing pixel art umbrella up in the sky here as well because I, you know what i don't like getting rained on either strider no anyway i think it's about time we take a trip down our trophy cabinet corridor and a big beam of light comes through we work out what our next z advancement is going to be that's going to go on my right left my your right my the left of the screen right here yeah over this space what is going to fill this gap what are we going to be doing what crazy stunt is coming next well I think I figured it out. You know when your bed is somewhere a little bit more dangerous than you would like it to be and you try and fight and say, hey, stop it. Stop doing the things you're doing. Oh, and you accidentally die only to respawn and then just be faced with exactly the same danger again. No, stop it. Leave my things alone. Who are you now? What is this? I have a bucket. And now they've picked up all of your gear, which means fighting them means you're kind of fighting yourself because that amazing sword you had is now working very hard against you. And this sort of thing just keeps on happening. You respawn, and guess what's waiting for you? A welcome party. We in the business like to call this a death loop. Oh, it's oh no, he's back. I will shovel you to death. I've done it before and I will do it again. We call this death loop, spawn camping, whatever you want to call it. It can be a real nuisance. But what if we did it on purpose? And I think for the most part, I'm talking about speed here. We want to try and do this as quickly as possible. So if we head down here, we have a lovely jubbly bubbly jacuzzi that um, if we pop our stuff down here, we pop a bed down, we can set our spawn, which is very, very good. Now, I want to see how quickly once we die and respawn, how quickly we can die again using this very lava here. And I think if we should take a look. You shall see if I hit respawn, run, 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 boom, do you see? Did you see that second or so? I was completely fine. Run, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm now not fine, I'm less fine, I'm less fine, I'm as least fine as I've ever been. But for a little time there, you're actually invulnerable when you first, like, respawn out of bed, which is actually terrible news for us because we want to be dying all over the place real quick, left, right, and center. But I think it's like, it's like a three-second delay you got to wait from when you first get up to when you can first take any little tiny bit of damage, which, I don't know about you, but when I first wake up in the morning, I am very delicate. Uh-oh, it gave me an idea, which actually might be a mini Z advancement of its own. I'm not entirely sure. What do you think? I'm going to try and uh, punch this up close with zero armor, nothing on. Um, you know, I'm basically just going to headbutt this thing. It will explode in an incredibly big explosion um, and shouldn't kill me or do any damage to me at all. Is that advancement worthy? It feels almost too easy with this little little bed trick. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, we want to make sure we are respawning to that bed. 
Um, then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna we're gonna light a little fire. We're gonna put this away. We're gonna do this all very carefully. I'm gonna respawn in that bed. Do do do. Just bear with me a second. Ouch. And are we ready? I've got to punch this thing very very quickly. Three two one. Respawn. Ha! Punch. Yes. <laughs> all I did was a little hop back. I was like, ooh. Excuse me, but look at the size of that crater. And yet I am perfectly fine without a scratch. Oh my good. I was thinking I was going to do F5 mode there and like my head would just be missing or something or I'd have an arm off. But enough with all the surviving dangerous explosions. We need to turn this thing into a Z advancement. Uh, this thing needs a proper description, needs a proper goal, and also needs a fun name as well. So what I was thinking, um, beds like this actually have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, and ten spots around it that you can actually respawn on. And if one of these is blocked with something, it will just put you in one of the other nine available. So uh, ten is a very, very nice number. It's obviously a two-digit number. What if we try and link together ten death messages one after the other? I think that would be very good. It's also more than a lives than a cat has, which maybe, you know, if I'm accidentally a cat or something like that, then we will also satisfy that need too. So I think the Z advancement should be... 10 death messages as quickly as we possibly can muster. So with that goal locked in, BAM! The deathbed. Let's do this. Now, there is a hidden upside to all of this. If we just mind our head on the cat, you'll see I've been sleeping right here nicely with my spy thing um, and my little clock, my little alarm clock in the morning. Um, this is where I've been sleeping most of the time. But, you know, it's not its not the most uh, comfortable bedroom. It kind of um, makes you wet yourself in the night because of uh, all the noises of water and stuff. But which way up is it? If we head over here, not that way, we will finally have a further use of one of our corridors. The top layer up there, all four corridors have perfect uses. We've got our trophy corridor there. Um, that has got a, a plan. This is open to the caves, but this one, it's nothing. It's just got this stupid little water column in that goes up to my villagers. But other than that, it is completely empty. Well, no more. Whoopsie, I'm sorry. I think if I dig in this way a little bit, hop, there it is. Yep, okay, that's my, uh, that's my cactus farm. So we don't want to touch that. We want to go slightly further away from that if possible. Hop, up, up. Oh, I've ruined everything. I think round about here should be pretty good. So we're going to give ourselves now a proper bedroom. And even better than that, we're going to give ourselves a proper bed contraption, which if you've been watching me for the last few series, you'll know is a pretty regular pattern for me. So pop in the bed down. I think there is a very good place. We want to make sure um, all 10 of these spots around the bed, like we said, are accessible. Um, if we reset our spawn and we do a little die real quick, or oh, slowly, apparently. This took way longer than I wanted it to with that regen beacon. Okay. <laughs> Boom. Perfect. I discovered the floor was lava. I did. I did. Now, look, it has put me right here um, next to the bed. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So now if we pop down some redstone, like a pressure plate or something, and something to get activated nearby, this piston should go off when we die. So back to the... Very slow, sizzly death. This really makes me want to have some bacon or something. Oh, I can't shift while I'm on it either. Okay, there it is again. Boom. Now look, boom. Straight away, you heard the piston go off as soon as we respawn back. So that's perfect because we know that we will spawn here exactly on this tile and we can detect when we have respawned using redstone. I'm... <laughs> There's some stuff going on in chat here. And the redstone here is obviously very important because we want to be doing this as speedy as we can. And little old me, I'm just a human. I can't do things as quickly as redstone and computers can. So we want to be totally automating this so that it is fail proof, fall proof, if you will. And we will be doing this in super speedy time. So uh, what we have here is what I want to do. Um, instead of just detecting us like that, I actually want to be able to boop, pull that block back so that we drop down. If we make a much bigger hole here, we can fall and splat on the floor, thus being a rather speedy way to kick the bucket. But of course, using full damage, the pressure plate like this won't work. As soon as you do that, the pressure plate breaks off and it is not reusable. We want this thing to be um, as reusable as possible as well. So instead, what we're gonna do is actually be using the old observer string technique. So if you get a little bit of string like that, like a tripwire, um, and then you observe it like this. Look at that string. Look at it go. Boom. Now that observer's actually gonna, you, oh, uh, 
If they, oh, I actually saw it. Wow, I didn't think I was going to be quick enough. But yeah, you can actually see when something enters the string and when something leaves the string again. So instead, if we change this around, we can create something. Boom, just like this. Okay, so we've got our string. And when something is detected in that string, it is going to push this non-sticky pistons redstone block over to here, which is actually going to unpower the dust unpower the piston, thus us falling down. Um, and this is actually like a memory cell because this one is non-sticky. It will never be undoable again. So even though this thing kind of detects when something goes in the string and when something comes out the string, that's like two pulses, it won't care. As soon as something goes in, let's throw something in, boop. You can see that redstone block is stuck there forever now and it will never go back. Um, and this thing is held open forever, which is great because we will go uh, and fall down to our death. But Zenaf, I hear you cry. Did you forget about the invulnerability time that you have to wait? Well, yes. Yes, I did forget, but I've rectified it now and there's no problems at all. We just have this buffer section in between. So on the right here, it's exactly what we always had. The string, observer and all of that. And on the left, we've got the uh, redstone block getting pushed away from the dust um, and a little reset system. But in between, we've got big old buffer buffy section um, with a load of repeaters down here that is set to precisely the right delay to counteract the length of time it takes for the invulnerability, that's such a hard word, to run out so that when we fall, we do um, fully take all the damage that we want. And up above, we've got these glass blocks here uh, that basically just make these pistons longer, pretty much, because um, this little piston here couldn't reach the redstone block, but now it can with the glass. So if we chuck one in, boop, you'll see the whole column goes and the redstone block now is not powering this anymore, which unpowers all of these over a certain amount of time, thus pulling the block back to our certain doom. Well, it's actually not because we're not going to die from the full damage, but I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, and then back over here, boop, we can reset it again. And this block goes back, allowing us to respawn on that exact block again. And that neatly brings me on to this. Why are we going to use every single space around the bed? Why not just keep using this one? Because I am. I'm going to drop myself here, here. I'm going to pull this block away over here. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side to pull all of these blocks all away. And if we're just falling anyway and falling to our doom, what, what does that matter? Well, we're not just falling to our doom. The Z advancement itself is going to be a little bit more interesting than just dying 10 times as quickly as you can. Oh no, fall, falling, you could do that real quick. What about dying 10 unique ways very quickly? That's a bit more like it. So looking at this side of the bed, we will have four individual columns where we can fall down, four places where we can uh, respawn and then get dropped. Um, and each of these is going to give us half a heart of life. We're going to take all the fall damage, nearly killing us, except we will just have half a heart remaining. And then down below, something else can kill us. And we will have unique things all down below to make sure our deaths are lovely and random and unique. This is going to be a lot of fun. We do have a slight problem over here, however, if we was to continue this on, that now this redstone is going to like merge together. So all of these would trigger at once. So we're going to have to try and do a little bit of staggering. Eh, something like that, like that, and like that over there. And then we'll have to change the, the timings around. No, not, not that way. Change the timings around to obviously counteract the extra repeater we're having on. So instead of being like a full tick like that, we'll go one, two, three. And then that will be the fourth one there. Um, I think that's going to work nicely. Let me just put all the rest of them in and we will test it. Oh, yeah, this is going to work perfectly. We put the observers on. We put the pistons on there. Um, and now we want to make sure that all of this is glass. Boo -boo, like so. And then if we can hop out, we want to just make sure there is a redstone block starting above each of these. Oh, no, don't make a cross eh, like that. Fill in all the gaps with glass. And then we also need to put glass in these little gaps there. But that should work out perfectly that individually each one of these can kind of be like removed. So uh, wait, let me get some let me get some quartz. These quartz blocks represent the places that we can respawn on like so. So if I touch this one. After a little delay, boom, that one drops it. What about number three? Boom, touch you. After a little while, it drops it. Number four, go on, you can do it. Drop, 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 drop. Ah, did it not work? What happened? Okay, we need to experiment. Uh, okay, uh, was I just missing glass? I think I might have just been missing an extra glass block in there somewhere. Okay, try again. I've re glassed it. We touch and we drop. And finally, we touch and 
we drop. Yes. Okay, I'm going to repeat that on this side and on the ends as well. And then, how about we die? Or I guess I should say... Very nearly die. Half a heart remaining there, which means this is the perfect drop distance for all nine of our splat zones down here. That's right, nine, not ten. The tenth one here is not a splat zone, and we will get onto exactly why that's the case in a little bit. But yeah, these nine splat zones, we're gonna come down, land on this one, half a heart remaining. Something else can finish us off. Maybe that torch can singe us or something, and then we'll we'll go back. The uh, That floor bit there will be removed, so we will not spawn back. We will spawn in a different place. We'll come and land on this one, and then maybe this time round, the wall will, will bore us to death or something. We just need nine different things down here that will finish the job, that, we, that will give us half a heart of damage to just push us over the edge after our lengthy fall there. And if we head straight back up, you'll see, Hodja, like so. Oh, I went way too high up. Okay, you can see I've mirrored exactly what we have on this side. So we've got four here, four here, and then we've got one singular one over the back as well. This tenth slot we are keeping empty, like I say, for secret reasons for later. But if we touch any of these, hubba, you'll see it drops us in the perfect timing. If we run over all four, Da, da 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 It should go ba 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 like that. And then this one as well. Uh, can I do it? I can. That one at the end will fall any which one we spawn in. It almost doesn't matter the order. You do actually spawn in the same order around the bed um, every time. There's like a priority thing. Um, so we will be spawning in the, the same order every time. But yeah, it doesn't actually matter where we spawn because when we do, it will drop us. We'll get um, killed down below by the final blow from something else. The block retracts, which means it's not a correct place to spawn at anymore. So at the moment, the only three places you can spawn around this bed are one, two, and three. And if we knock some of those out, uh, like that, is that two of them? Yep, perfect. This is the only available spawn place now. I mean, eventually it just puts you like on top of the bed. So that's fine, but that's how we're gonna end it. Um, we're gonna go all the way around the edge uh, and then we'll end up on the bed when, we, when we're done with our full um, Z advancement progress there. And then jumping up here, we can hit this button which simply just pushes all of these pistons. So it'll push these four, those four on the other side, and one at the back um, that just makes it so these redstone blocks are back above the redstone, meaning all of the lights come on, meaning all of the things get pushed around. I can run around like this. Whee! And then it... <laughs> <laughs> it opens it up behind me. In fact, I can even get rid of these were like safety blocks before just because I didn't want to be falling down um, while I was trying to build this thing, but they can fully come out. Oh, oh, that was one more safety block. But now I think it's about time we go on the hunt for nine varied deaths. We'll grab ourselves our trusty flint and steel, grab a whole bunch of mine carts and the tracks and things, kill some skeletons to get some arrows. Pick ourselves up a stalagmite, not a stalactite. It's important to get the difference. Fish for some puffer fish. Visit the desert to get some cactus. Borrow a uh, wither rose from Tango. Forget how to craft fireworks that have painful ouchiness in them. And brew up some lovely, horrible, painful potions. And when you put all of that together, you get something a little bit like this, which I've got to say is is a very odd sight to behold. You show anybody like a picture of this, I bet you they would have no clue what its intended use is for. Um, and I must say as well, a massive thank you um, to one of my patrons, uh, the resident death spurt on the Zedcraft server, Sam's Penguins. Thank you so very much for helping me um, with this little bottom bit here, just getting like the distances right and like where things have to go and stuff like that. Um, appreciate your help there, my friend. So, oh, B-dubs. B-dubs is sleeping. Of course he is. Ho hopefully not in the bed that's just up there. But um, what do we have? Right, I've locked these dispensers right now so that uh, these pressure plates don't do anything. But um, in actual fact, not in any particular order. We'll just go around the edge here. Um, this one obviously will splash us with an instant damage once we land on the pressure plate. So we'd fall down, half a heart, um, a short little pulse just to make sure that we have actually landed fully. Um, and that our, our full damage pain has kind of acknowledged and gone through. Then we get splashed with damage. Uh, then next up, boop, we've got fire, we'll land, we'll sizzle and finish ourselves off that way. Another pressure plate here with an arrow to the knee, of course. Oh, hello. They're making noises back there. Um, this one, we uh, fall very painfully where the sun don't shine right onto a stalactite. Oh, I've got to get it right. Um, these noisy, weird pixel circle of, of stuff is obviously a whole bunch of puffer fish. Um, and because we fall on that slab there, they're able to spike us with their spikies. Um, and sticking with the spiky, it's very spiky, this corner. We've also got a cactus up our bottoms as well. 
uh, which can't grow because of the string on top. Keeping with the nature theme, we've got a wither rose that we will land on and wither away. Um, and then round this side, we have 23 and now 24 minecarts all in a row ready to squish us with entity cramming. And last but not least, we have another pressure plate with a rocket ready to firework us in our faces as well. Nine deaths all in a row. Um, I think we better test one of them, actually. So uh, if we take a little... Oh, see, this is why I've locked these. Otherwise, they'd be, they'd be deathing me all over the place. Um, you can see up here, I've actually put glass down everywhere except for this spot, which is right above the Wither Rose. So that should be where we spawn first. We'll fall down and wither rose ourself, um, just, to, just to make sure that's fully working. Gotta quickly hit the old reset button so they all go back. There's the hole that we're gonna be falling through. Uh, right, now let's go and find some uh, some danger for us to get into so that we can uh, actually do a respawn. Back to the old pulled pork parade obstacle course and oh no, oh, oh, I've done it so badly. Oh, look at me, oh, it hurts. Actually, it doesn't even hurt that bad. <laughs> There it is, and then obviously we'd want to hit respawn as quickly as we possibly can. So boom, it puts us here, it puts us on the right block as well. We fall, and we wither away. Did you see we got to half a heart, and then instant witherage. Now when we respawn again, it'll put us on the next one. We would fall down and get squished by the minecarts, and then when we get spat out again, I think it spits us out on this one. Boom, we would fall down and get fireworked in the face, and you can see each time because it's removing the block, it just forces us to go on one of the other deaths. Um, now this block here in the middle, this one is gonna be gone forever. I can actually get rid of this little shield now. And of course, we're gonna wanna spend some time soon decorating up this corridor a little bit, but for now, I've just tidied things up and made it nice and neat, including putting a bunch of black concrete down the hole as well, just to make it nice and dark and spooky. But now all that's left to do is find a hermit to help kickstart our loop, and you know what? I don't think they need to know that it's going to kickstart a 10 death death loop. Aha! Hello, sir! There he Hello. is! You need Come to tidy up your Come lawn, mister. <laughs> my what? Your lawn! I, I know, I get. This, well, this is, this is the thing. This is what people know as my base, but I never come out here. I just stay in the hole all day. You know how it is. Tago, I need your help desperately. Okay, okay. I think this is only something you were able to do. Um, we, we, we're right. good friends, right? Yeah, okay, we'll go with that. Yeah, that sounds yeah, like a good yeah. option. How yeah, long would you yeah. say we've been friends for? Oof, um, seven, eight years? The correct answer was too long, but yeah, I'll, I'll accept that okay, as well. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> in, that, in that case, Tango, please, 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 can you uh -huh. punch me square in the face? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hold it. Oh, that was the greatest thing ever. Thank Hold you. it. Hold oh, it. Away. Hold on a second. Very good. Yep, yep. Brilliant. <laughs> Working flawlessly. What's happening? Count them, Tango. Count them. What are we up to? How? How is this happening? Count the devs. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. They'll still keep going. Come on now. I want a time limit seven. here. Seven. Seven. We need those double digits. Eight. <laughs> so good. There it is. Okay. Nine. And the, fi the final one, I believe. Come on. Come on. What is it? Boom. And prick to death. <laughs> There it is. How did you do that? You just made a crazy <laughs> kill ZF contraption, didn't you? <laughs> Pretty much. I'm trying my best to get 10 unique death messages as quickly as I possibly can in quick succession. Oh my gosh. And I think I think I might have just got nearly the theoretical like huh? quickness there. How, if you kept, were you just running into a new machine every time, or tell you, you, what. you came to the same? I gotta see this. I come over to this. my base. I'll show you everything. Okay, come on down this corridor this way. It's just over here. <laughs> coming, coming, coming. And ta da! <laughs> this is this is the death. This bed. is it. Yeah, the this death. Is it. <laughs> it looks so dark and hold ominous. On. Hold on, I fell. You're okay. demonstrating. Oh, hold on, <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Please don't kill me. <laughs> what there it the... is. It's just a special little bed up there that detects which um, space you like respawn on. It pulls the floor uh -huh. out from under you, so you fall, take nearly, you nearly die. You get half a heart left, and then all these nine things around here just just tip you over the edge a little bit. So you're dynamically changing which floor, like is it like a like an incrementer up there or something that like figures out? Okay, close the next floor, close the next floor, or something. Like Back that. up, we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. Hopefully, I don't die this time. Oh, you got you got observers on each one there. Look at that. There you go. So this resets it. So now, as soon as I touch one of these pieces of string, in just the right timing, it will drop that bit of floor. And then if and I was that, to touch this one, and when you one, respawn, it puts you on one of those blocks, and that's the one it closes off. Exactly. Clever. You've always been the bed wizard. You know that, right? <laughs> what a nickname! I love it, bed wizard. <laughs> that was my nickname in college. Right? <laughs> so cool that's clever i like it thank that's you very good, very thank good, you very and good. the reason is as well there's a little bit of a delay like if i touch this string here it doesn't open it straight away because that's okay like, when you respawn you've got like three or four seconds of invulnerability before you can take damage again oh, so I've, I've timed it perfectly so it should be tick perfect for you to be able to fall and take I damage <laughs> just correctly so yeah theoretically i think i just did that in 48.2 seconds which that's amazing. And then the yeah. fall damage is enough so you're one heart on all of these things. Oh. Yeah, half a heart. And then the, the other Impressive. things just finish you off down there Impressive. if you get cactus or whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun way to go. You're crazy, man. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I appreciate thank that. Thank you. And with that, the deathbed joins all of our completed Z advancements so far this season. That list is looking rather nice. But that is going to be it for today's episode. So thank you very much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I do appreciate all the support. And of course, a massive beautiful thank you to my wonderful patrons whose names are all over the screen right now, making your screen look even cooler than it did before. Thank you also very much for your wonderful support. But until the next episode, a good... Bye-bye. Uh,